Springfield School is taking a unique and very cute approach to learning. Springfield is staking its claim as a national sporting super city. Springfield locals getting into the spirit of the festival of learning. In Springfield, the local state school students have set a new world record. Springfield is a nation building project and a project of national significance. Hi, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm here with uh, Narin Sinatambi, the Director of Commercial Development for Springfield City Group. They're the master developers of Greater Springfield in Queensland, Australia. And they have won many awards, many global awards and awards in Australia itself, including the world's best master plan community development. And uh, I'm here to have a chat with Narin. Thanks for your time, Narin. Chitan, Happy New Year, Ashok. Happy New Year. <laughs> Narin also happens to be the son of the legendary Maha Sinatambi, who is the founder and chairman of uh, Greater Springfield and uh, Springfield City Group. So uh, Narin, maybe uh, you could start off by telling us uh, what it is that you do in, and what your typical day is like. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, I'm doing the company this year, I can't believe I'm saying this is my 20th year, uh, with Springfield City Group. And it's been an amazing time. My role essentially involves a bit of marketing, a bit of communications, and also commercial development, growing the commercial presence of Greater Springfield and companies coming into Greater Springfield. So our latest uh, welcoming addition in terms of corporates is General Electric. Uh, we also have joint venture alliances with Lindley's, who do developments all over the world, and uh, also Mervac, who are in charge of our shopping center. So essentially my role is to highlight and influence and you know, convince in the right way, businesses, whether they be small, medium or large, the Greater Springfield is a good place for them to identify as their corporate headquarters or start a business. I like what you said about the part where you had to convince companies, big and small, both to come into the development. Yes. So what would you say were your toughest marketing challenges back then? Because you're obviously a new brand. Yeah. Saying that we still have now. <laughs> um, a lot of people think that you know it's all peaches and cream after 27 years. We still have those challenges. I mean, the argument has been somewhat simplified, but you know, you have to imagine, for those people who are aware of Brisbane, they would know that we were in a, a shire of Brisbane, or Ipswich, that was very socially and economically depressed. So, um, and I certainly can't take any credit for this, I'm just blessed to be part of the journey, but when uh, Maha and Bob, to those days, went back 27 years ago, 1992, in any area, no amenity, no social infrastructure, nothing of any kind, and saying we want to build a city of the future. You can imagine the looks that they got, um, and it just was not successful for them. So they had to sell not only on what the vision is, but what they were prepared to do to make that vision a reality. And that's what we always talk about strategy and planning. But I still think that business relationships and convincing people, it, yes it's about a brand, but I always say the person is the brand. You know, whether we look at a Steve Jobs or, or a, a, a Jeff Bezos or a Jack Ma, all these people, they are the brand. We know them as much as we know Apple, as much as we know Amazon, as much as we know Alibaba. The person is the brand. And a lot of people say, but I'm not a big business. Mm -hmm. But you are still a business and you can still create your own brand. I said, if you go and stand in the middle of the city of Brisbane and you mention Springfield, there are two things that they'll say. They will either say Springfield Lakes 
or they'll say, I think there's some Indian developer called Maha. So there's, there's two brands that they know about Springfield. Mm -hmm. So it still comes down to the human being behind the brand. And I think for many Malaysians as well who are looking to migrate to Australia, yes. it's one of the more affordable places to move in. Absolutely. We also have evolved from what we call property development to place making. And I think that goes back to, to what you were saying. And I think Singapore has become a great study in place making. Um, and that's something that applies to us more than say London and Paris, which really I was blown away with. I, I was blown away with cities like London, for example, why on earth do people pay exorbitant amount of money, really exorbitant amounts of money, to live in a very small residential apartment, maybe it's a home, and they're very happy with that. The reason is that they can go outside the house, get on a tube, go and see a musical at West End, go and see a football match, and then go back and see the opening of the Royal Palace Guard, and then go back to their house. What other city in the world can you do that? Paris, you can get on the Eurostar, go or, or from London, you can go to Paris on the Eurostar within two hours, go for a nice weekend in France. I mean, I mean these are amazing things, but they have taken centuries. Is that what you think developers should focus on in Malaysia? And also, is that what is lacking currently? So I definitely think that uh, developers and countries can learn from what is being done well. And, and I think that one of those elements is traveling to go and see the developments that have done well. Last year, uh, as you know, we went took a trip to London, you know, to Brussels, to Paris, and to Singapore. And Singapore is a great example of a country that really from uh, a national resources point of view didn't have a lot. How has it become the pearl of Asia? Uh, that journey has taken a good 30 to 40 years, but it came through great leadership and great execution. Only one third of the people who live in Brookwater, which is our golf course residential community, only one third play golf. It's kind of like, what's the suburb outside of Beverly Hills, do you know? No. Neither do I, because they're either Beverly Hills or they're not. The reason I mention that is we couldn't do that alone. We needed to get a tournament standard golf player, a, an iconic name. Mm -hmm. And again, the name is a brand. The brand that we chose was Greg Norman. Most people, whether they know it or not, business is still an emotional decision. And so you need to appeal to them. Because gone are the days where you dictate to the market. The new age, whether it's, I, I don't know whether we're talking about millennials or just the age group above the millennials, but they have more, they have the exposure to more and they're quite willing to take it. Yeah, as you can see, we were talking about some big brands in the food industry. We would go with Titans, they would never go under. Mm -hmm. And because of this device here, they've got access to more information and they're not scared to move overseas. First time in the history of our nation, we're now seeing people buy property with cryptocurrency, with Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Developers in, in Sydney are now making apartments where the kitchens are optional. I couldn't believe it because people are eating out literally three times a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner. I'll finish on this last point. We've just done a deal with the RNF Group to build 10,000 apartments in Greater Springfield over the next 15 years. Mm -hmm. Don't believe me? Go and do your own research about our project, about its accolades and accomplishments. And uh, if it's the right fit for you, of course, we're happy to. Talk. Hi, Marin. Well, thanks, I mean, Ashok. Appreciate it's been it. Fantastic you know? talking to you. I'm sure everyone here is learned a lot and appreciate what, what you have in I mind. So. Especially developers will understand what the people of today, the millennials, are looking forward to. And, and we wish you the best. No, thank you.